welcome to Tiffany's Hollywood Studios on a day where there were no more park passes available. It is at capacity and super busy. I've booked Genie Plus for the day. I'm gonna see how much I can get done. I'm gonna take you guys along with me. Now I'm actually staying off site at the moment, so I did not have the half an hour early entry. Park has just opened now for regular guests. I did have to queue to get in. So I'm gonna head straight on down and see if there's anything I can get on before my Slinky Dog Dash at Genie Plus, which is the first one that I have this morning. check out these wait times yeah it's pretty crazy <laughs> That was so much fun, I absolutely love that ride. So once I tapped in for my Slinky Dog ride, I actually booked Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. That was already up at 12 p.m., which was actually one of the sooner times. I checked Tower of Terror, just out of curiosity. That was up at 8.15 p.m. already. So only like an hour and 10 minutes into park opening and Tower of Terror is at quarter past Eight. So unfortunately, it seems like even though today is a busier day, it's more expensive, $29.99 for Genie Plus, it's still popular. And so you end up getting hit twice. You end up paying more money. And then also because it's busier, you don't get that much use out of it. So it's more expensive for less rides, which is, oh, it's a tough pill to swallow, isn't it? And obviously, you know, the best advice is just to not come to the parks on days when it's this busy. But I know for some people that's just not an option. And so if you have to come on a day when it's this busy, you can see 9.44 a.m. Toy Story Mania is now 75 minutes. I'm afraid you're just going to have to queue. Even if you're willing to spend the money on Genie Plus, you're going to be in a position where you can't get all the rides done on Genie Plus and you're just gonna have to face those longer lines if you wanna do everything. Unfortunately, another downside to the busy crowds is that, <laughs> what are you just talking in the background? The other downside is that um, people get very stressed. And unfortunately, as I was walking to go on Slinky Dog, there was a little bit of an incident. There was this guy screaming at his wife. I assume she was his wife, screaming at her because she'd obviously read something wrong on the app because he was like you just looked you just showed me something 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 and like everybody everybody turned around it was so loud so aggressive i like didn't want to make it worse obviously by staring so i kind of just like walked on i mean that's just outrageous behavior anyway but just to be aware like you will be surrounded by people that are super stressed because obviously they have probably paid 30 dollars a head times maybe four people, five people in a family on top of their park ticket. And then they're trying to work with Genie Plus and like that they're seeing return times of like 8 p.m. at nine o'clock in the morning. And so it is a stressful situation. There's a lot of money involved. There's a lot of pressure to get loads done to have a good day. I think then just like as best as you can, try not to get absorbed into the madness. It's very easy to get absorbed. Like I found myself before, you know, getting stressed, power walking around. And obviously, you know, that might be what you need to do to try and get things done. But if it's possible, if you've got a second day in the park, or if, you know, you've got a trip where you've got maybe three or four days that are gonna be super busy, and the rest of the trip is not gonna be as busy, just take a step back on those busy days, do some things that are a bit more relaxing, and try not let yourself get absorbed. <laughs> into the stress and chaos around you because you can so easily be surrounded by that and then just kind of feel it yourself and then you yourself start getting stressed here is the length of your late morning starbucks line oh my gosh it is out the door and it is down the street jeez i think i'm all right for a starbucks <laughs> To be fair, if I could actually mobile order one, I would get one, but <laughs> I'm definitely not worth waiting in that line. Right, we're gonna pop in here because this is where they have the anniversary collection. It's new. Oh my gosh, look at these in the window. That's so cute. The little minis dancing. 
Okay, so here we have the 100th Disney anniversary collection. We've got a throw, we've got a cute photo frame, water bottle, and a snow globe. It's $40 for the snow globe. I actually asked about the price of the water bottle because there's no price tag on it. It's $22 totally random tangent but i didn't realize that some snow globes have antifreeze in them and they are deadly for pets so just an fyi if you have a few snow globes around your place and you have pets um check if they've got antifreeze in them because there was a horrific story that came out from london of a lady that lost her two dogs absolutely heartbreaking just before christmas it was a christmas snowball so just check Snowball or snow globe, you know what I mean. The figurines are quite cute actually. And it's $50 for the figurine collection. I love the popcorn. I actually really like the color scheme, the purple and white. I think it's really cute. And I love that the merchandise has Daisy. Now, a lot of it doesn't have Pluto. So it's kind of like they've replaced Pluto with Daisy, which, I mean, I love Pluto, but I actually would prefer to have Daisy on the merchandise. So I'm not too mad about it. All right, here are the plushies. We've got Minnie. And Mickey, oh, look at Mickey's little suit. That is so cute. And then Minnie's dress is fabulous as well. It's $34.99. I went through a phase like years and years ago where I bought a lot of plushies. I don't buy them at all anymore. I still have a couple lying around, but to be honest, like, I don't really know what to do with them. I kind of let Pumba have um, a little bit of a play with one of them. And then I kind of took it off him because, I don't know, it just seemed pretty harsh to just let him destroy one of the plushies. Oh, they've got Pluto here though. We've got a plushy Pluto, $34.99 as well. And then look, they've got some dog apparel in the spirit jersey design. That's so cute. The dog spirit jerseys are $44.99. And then there's this other design down here. What's this? Oh, it's just Mickey. That's cute. And then we've got a kid's t-shirt here. It's $29.99 for the kid's t-shirt. And then we've got a beach towel. Oh, and Pluto's on the beach towel and Daisy's not. So random. Here is the t-shirt then. So again, this has Daisy on it, but it also has Pluto. So this has the six of them. And this is $29.99. And they've got the figurines here as well. There's $12.99. There's Minnie, Mickey, and then the spirit jersey. Look guys, it actually has the characters at the bottom. Oh my gosh, it has Tinkerbell. I didn't even notice that. So we have all six and we have Tinkerbell. It is $89.99 for the spirit jersey. It is gorgeous. That is an astronomical price for the quality of these tops, I have to say. But, oh, I don't know, I love the design. And then when it's limited edition, when it's limited edition, that's when things get me, right? That's when I end up spending money that I don't plan to spend, because I'm like, oh, if I don't get it now, I can never ever get it. They've got a cushion here as well. Now the cushion's kind of like an off-white, and in person, it, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of it. I feel like it looks a little bit grubby already, if that makes sense. And it is $49.99. But also just like a light color like that in general for a cushion would get absolutely destroyed at mine because my little dog Pumba, he would destroy it. Chip and Taylor are so cute. I love that. Do they come together? Yes, they do. Yay, that's so cute. $34.99. That's a bargain then compared to the others. You get two little blushies. Now they are a little bit smaller actually, but that's so cute some chocolate bars all right so it looks like that is it then for the 100 years of wonder collection i don't see anything from the 50th which is strange because you saw they had the mini out in the front there in the window maybe they just haven't got it in yet i did see that was online yesterday i think and um, they still have christmas collection here but nothing is reduced i saw one or two things reduced as i was going by the shops on the other side like star wars stuff but the regular stuff here is not reduced and it is online so just always check online because even actually when it was just the start of the season there was stuff that was reduced online that was full price in the park so whenever i'm getting kind of like bigger purchases i'll always check online or if it's seasonal stock again i'll check online they've also brought out a new starbucks tumbler as part of the collection and this is really nice it's actually nicer in person i think it's like really blingy this sparkly silver it is $50 though which is outrageous I think this is outrageous but it is really nice now the one that I have this actually went to the outlets I think like around half price or even less so do keep an eye out if you are coming and you go to the outlets you might find some
So one thing I like to do when I'm here and I've booked a Jean Plus that's a little bit further away, but I still want to make use of it, but I'm kind of like getting tired or, you know, there's just not much else in the park that I really want to do. I will pop out to a resort, chill out, grab a bit of food. And I'm actually starving. Like it's still super early. It's like 10 to 11. I've got my Genie Plus in just over an hour but I'm so hungry. So I'm gonna go to Disney's Riviera Resort. Now I've actually done this a couple of times from Hollywood Studios because it's so handy. You just pop on the Skyliner, pop over to Riviera. I can chill out there for a while, eat, just stay nice and cool and relaxed. And then I'll come back for my Genie Plus. Now my two hour window is gonna come up before 12 o'clock. So that means that while I'm chilling at Riviera, I can book my next Genie Plus. <laughs> I am chilling at the Riviera and staying hydrated. But I wanted to update you guys on Genie Plus. So it is now 5 to 12. My two hour window opened about 15 minutes ago. And the only things I was able to get that were within like the next sort of two hours was Meet Olaf, Star Tours, which I do not do because it makes me feel so ill. And, oh, Alien Sword and Saucers. So they were the only three that were within the next couple of hours. The nearest one then to that that I would have considered was Toy Story Mania again, and that is for 4.30 though. So um, that's a bit further out than I plan on staying today. And then the others that were available were Mickey and Minnie's for 6.30. Um, obviously, I already have that booked for 12 o'clock, and then the other one was Rock and Roller Coaster, and that was for like 7.45. So that means like if you go for Mickey and Minnie's or you go for Rock and Roller Coaster, obviously that's like six hours away at least, and then by that time, like there's not going to be anything else left, like because you won't be able to book again for another two hours. So I mean, you might get like aliens or saucers or something, but also it means like six hours of staying in the very busy park which is the downside really is that you know you have to hang around in the busy park for a long time before you get your next ride obviously clouds are heavy today so it's understandable that you know it's going to be longer waits and stuff but i just don't feel like genie plus works very well in this situation but at the same time it's kind of your only option unless you're willing to wait in one hour two hour queues and I guess if you think about it, $30 is what you would pay today. Now, I got very lucky with my Slinky Dog reservation this morning. I think normally when I do Slinky Dog on Genie Plus, I might not get it for two hours or more. Um, so luckily for me, I got Slinky Dog, Mickey and Minnie's, and then theoretically I could book Toy Story Mania for four o'clock. And then at four o'clock, I'd probably get like Alien Sword and Saucers still available. That's four reservations. So if you break that down to a cost per ride, it's about $7.50. But I think that in itself isn't bad. I think the thing that's really bad is that you're paying $7.50 a ride and you have to stay in the park the entire day to be able to get on those four rides. Whereas I'm more of like a come in in the morning, stay till lunchtime, leave the park, maybe come back in the evening. And I just don't think that works when it's this busy. Obviously if I was staying on site, I would have had the extra half hour in the morning. Now you may have seen on my last trip, sometimes that doesn't go to plan and like loads of rides are down and stuff, even on busy days. So you can't even really rely on that. So I think for me, if I'm here and there is days that I know it's gonna be super busy and I just can't avoid being on holiday at a time when it's super busy, like I said earlier, I'll just try and have those days as more relaxing days. I don't think I would ordinarily purchase Genie Plus. I kind of wanted to like test it out today, but certainly if I was with my family, there's no way we would pay four times $30, $120 for us to get on four rides each 
it's just not worth it in my opinion. If I compare it to the experience that you'll have over at Universal, you'll pay more money per person to get an express pass, but you will not be in a situation where you pay for an express pass and you can only get on four rides in a day. I think, in my opinion, it's better to have a more premium product that maybe you only treat yourself to for one day of your trip. I think it's more frustrating for people to pay a price, even a lower price, and not get a good service. It's so difficult, isn't it? Because then obviously putting it at that premium price is gonna price a lot of people out, but then maybe that's not a bad thing. Maybe having less people using Genie Plus and the majority of park guests using the standby line, you would just have happier people in a happier park and we'd all just enjoy it more. Because in that situation, I just probably wouldn't pay the premium price and I would like very rarely use Genie Plus and instead I would use the standby line. Now obviously there's like numbers in the background to that that have to be run, but like if you could get to a point where they can make the same amount of money by charging a higher price, having less guests use it, and then overall everyone's happier because the people that are paying the premium price are getting a premium service, the rest of the guests are not paying that price, they're in standby lines, they're moving faster because there's less people in the Genie Plus lines, and I just think that's a better solution. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I love hearing like people's different perspectives on things. Like I say, like I don't like to be a moaner or a complainer. I'm always grateful like that I get to come to the parks and have a good time and stuff. And yeah, I think the big takeaway from today is, you know, I would just personally do everything I could do to avoid coming to the parks at a busy time and then if I could stagger my trip in such a way that, you know, if I really had to come at a busy time, like I do this time, because, you know, I didn't pick the time in on this run. I guess I could have come just before the run and then stayed afterwards, but that's not great for the run itself because I have to acclimatize and like, you know, get used to it. And I always feel like a little bit run down after travel and stuff. So for me in this situation, it just wasn't possible, but I'm thinking more about people, you know, that are having that trip that's like a once in a year, once in, two year, three year, four year, once in a lifetime trip. And uh, yeah, I think like I would just do everything possible to not end up in a situation where the whole of your trip is over a busy period, like just do that research. But then if you have to have it, at least try and have it that you only have part of your trip over that busy period and then use those days as your more down days, like enjoy the shows, like take it chilled, don't buy Genie Plus. <laughs> Um, yeah, that, that's I think my takeaway from today, but totally uh, understand that people have different perspectives and I love hearing those in the comments, so let me know. I am on a very breezy ride back to Disney's Hollywood Studios. I'm excited to get back. I just remembered, I forgot to mention that Smuggler's Run was another ride that was available around the seven o'clock mark. We are swaying. That's weird. The other ones don't look like they're swaying. I am swaying. Can you see that? This is the most I think I've ever swayed side to side. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, the smell of this popcorn. It's so good, it smells so buttery. Oh, I'm really tempted. I almost bought myself, you know, the uh, Pop Secret movie movie butter popcorn. It's basically the brand that they use in the parks, but I didn't get it when I was in Target and now I'm kind of regretting it. Oh, maybe I'll have to pick up some popcorn. <laughs> And that is a wrap at Disney's Hollywood Studios for me today. I caught myself earlier on the Skyliner saying we when I said the Skyliner was swaying. And then I was thinking like, why am I saying we? I'm just by myself. And I think subconsciously, I feel like when I'm vlogging, you guys are kind of with me here. <laughs> And I think that's also why when I'm here solo, I vlog so much more because talking to the camera is kind of like having a bit of company. Quite bizarre when you think about it because I am literally just talking to myself walking around here. Uh, but I'm going to go pick up the car. Oh, another little tip I meant to give you guys earlier. I went to Riviera about half 11, stayed for about an hour and came back to the parks. Now, if you're looking to do that, if you're looking to escape the crowds and pop off to a resort, make sure you don't do it around park hop time because not only then will the transport be really busy because people will be changing, 
but also then you'll end up waiting longer to get back into the park because people will have come to the park all right i did have to check my picture because the number i had in my head was totally different to the one that i've actually parked in uh, i parked in 307 so i'm almost there